good morning students <coughs> today we shall consider some aspects of the immune system how immune system functions how it efficiently combats the disease and keeps up our health two properties are uh, very essential for uh, proper functioning of immune system one is immune recognition and the other is immune memory by immune recognition i mean to say whatever is the number of pathogens that enter our body our immune system is able to recognize them able to identify them this is immune recognition and immune memory is the function of immune system that which keeps up the entire information in its memory and retrieves it back when there is a second infection <clears throat> on the arsenal of immune system the defense system is a three tier uh, defense system the first line of defense is composed of skin all the mucous membranes that exist in the body tears saliva and the like in addition natural killer cells whenever there is a possibility of infection the first line of defense becomes active and tries to prevent uh, the entry of pathogen into our body then the second line this consists of phagocytes inflammation fever and production of antibiotic proteins if by chance a pathogen escapes the first line of defense the second line comes into picture and a number of activities take place inside our body so that uh, the infection is prevented and we are uh, protected if there is a failure at this level also then the third line comes into picture the third line has b cells t cells as the key players and one assumption is that all the three defense lines they function simultaneously at one time just for the sake of understanding we separate the three defense lines and uh, think of them uh, independently <coughs> then the immunity i mean to say the resistance offered by the immune system is of two types one is natural immunity and the other is acquired natural immunity is otherwise called innate immunity while acquired immunity is adaptive immunity natural immunity appears by birth it is non specific non specific in the sense it's more of general nature fights against a variety of uh, infecting agents in addition it's uniform in a given species all the members of a species uh, uh, show uniform uh, uh, resistance to a particular set of infections and as such natural immunity doesn't generate immune memory and a number of anatomical physiological phagocytic and inflammatory responses are involved in uh, providing natural immunity on the other hand acquired immunity is activated after antigenic stimulation it is specific specific in the sense one antibody is produced against one particular antigen that's why only our immune system is able to fight against thousands and thousands of antigens to which we are exposed to in our lifetime and acquired immunity is different uh, in the members of a species it's not uniform in all the members of a particular species and here immune memory is generated and this is basically mediated by lymphocytes and antibodies and in the natural immunity four or five different factors can be identified one is the physical and mechanical barriers second the biochemical barriers third the cellular factors involving phagocytosis and the genetic factors and certain other factors like temperature and fever considering the physical and mechanical uh, barriers skin is the first and foremost barrier that prevents so many infections and all the mucous membranes as i mentioned earlier they prevent uh, many infections 
and tears that uh, are shed from our eyes, salivation in the mouth and various nasal secretions, secretions of the urethra, uh, peristaltic movements uh, in the intestines, uh, general cough and sneezings. All these, they function as efficient physical and mechanical barriers in preventing infections. And the biochemical barriers include the sweat and sebum produced by the skin, the low pH in the digestive tract, lactoferritin in milk which can provide us protection against a number of staphylococci and E. coli and a number of mucopolysaccharides inside our saliva and also nas nasal secretions and the lysozyme present in our tears and a number of uh, substances called interferons uh, produced by uh, many a tissue. These are antiviral in particular and also increase the natural killer cell uh, activity. And the complement proteins, which are general proteins that exist uh, in our body, uh, which fight against uh, various pathogens uh, by promoting phagocytosis and destruction of uh, pathogens. And a number of propyldins, uh, which are uh, protective against gram negative bacteria. And secretions of uh, various commensal bacterial flora in our body and semen, uh, which contains spermazine and zinc and certain acute phase proteins like uh, CRPC reactive protein uh, produced uh, when there is an infection of uh, pneumococcus. All these biochemical uh, barriers, they offer us very good protection against uh, infection of infection uh, of a number of pathogens. And another one is the cellular factor set. This is basically by phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is uh, cell eating what we call generally. A number of macrophages are involved and macrophages are involved. Macrophages are polymorphonuclear leukocytes while macrophages are uh, monomorphonuclear leukocytes. In addition, natural killer cells are also involved here in phagocytosis. And phagocytosis is a three step process, where chemotaxis is affected first. I mean, uh, these uh, phagocytic cells are attracted towards the pathogen by way of chemotaxis and then they get attached to the pathogens and then by lysosomal activity destruction take place. And genetic factors are also considered in natural immunity, where uh, Variations are observed at the species level, at the race level and at the individual level. And we have to consider two general phenomena happening in our body regularly. One thing is a raise in temperature. Our body temperature is congenial for our uh, metabolic activities. At the same time, it is not congenial for the existence of so many a pathogen that uh, come on our way. Whenever there is an infection, in general body temperature raises a bit, we call it pyrexia uh, in general terms fever and fever is almost uh, a protective mechanism adopted by the body. So, in general whenever there is fever, uh, we need not go for medication and remember that it is a protective mechanism naturally offered by our uh, immune system. And adoptive acquired immunity is adoptive as we mentioned previously. Here in innate immunity, these are the different types of uh, cells involved, epithelial barriers, phagocytes and dendritic cells, natural killer cells as I mentioned earlier in addition complement proteins. And in adoptive immunity, lymphocytes, various populations of lymphocytes are involved and the mechanisms we will see a bit later on. And immunity is said to be active and passive when there is uh, a discrimination. When there is antibody production, immunity is said to be active. This is almost specific for each antigen to which we are exposed to 
and it generates immune uh, memory. And passive immunity is uh, in such a case, there is no antibody production inside the body. It is also specific, but uh, passive immunity does not generate uh, immune memory. And this active immunity can be categorized into different types based on different criteria. Based on the factors involved, this is of two types, humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity. Humoral immunity involves antigen antibody reactions. A series of reactions takes place, take place since the infection. A number of B cells are involved specific B cell population is selected, a clone is selected, then uh, memory is created. Whenever there is a secondary infection, a secondary immune response is generated uh, at once by the production of uh, huge amounts of antibodies uh, against the specific antigen. And cell mediated immunity, this does not involve antigen antibody reactions, it is generated caused by sensitized lymphocytes. Uh, killing the pathogens in various means. Based on the way we acquire uh, immunity, this is again two types of natural active immunity. Suppose we get a measles infection in our childhood, we suffer uh, for some time and get recovered and during the rest of the lifetime, entire lifetime in general, we are not prone to measles infection for a second time. Why? Because immune system keeps uh, the information about measles and the causative agents in its memory and whenever there is a secondary opportunistic infection, immune system fights at once and in general there would not be a second infection. And artificial active immunity is developed by our cells, this is by means of vaccines. And vaccines are of different types. This is a brief account of vaccines. Vaccines is a was subject uh, uh, which uh, needs uh, some other uh, uh, specific time to look into. Live vaccines may be virulent, may be heterologous, may be attenuated. Many of the live vaccines we use are attenuated. We select specific uh, strains of pathogenic agents and then reduce the vir virulence by means of temperature or some other chemicals. Here the pathogen is live, but weakened. This generates effective immune reactions in our body, offers very good protection against a, a number of diseases concerned. And some vaccines are prepared uh, from uh, live microbes, but here we kill the microbes as such. These microbes, I mean these vaccines prepared from killed microbes are uh, less effective when ca compared to live attenuated uh, vaccines. And some vaccines are being produced artificially, these are synthetic vaccines as in the case of flu, rabies, uh, so on and so forth. And in these days, transgenic vaccines are also being produced effectively, for example, uh, hepatitis. Uh, vaccine is a transgenic vaccine. And in addition, recombinant vaccines are also being developed as in the case of vaccination for FMDV. Then the passive immunity, this is of two types, one is natural, one is artificial. Natural passive immunity, this is uh, from mother, this is transferred from mother to the fetus. Immunoglobulin G class of uh, uh, antibodies, they cross through the placenta effectively and protect the fetus against a number of uh, infections. And the first formed milk given by the mother to the neonatal child called colostrum, this is rich in uh, IgA antibodies. These uh, IgG and IgA, they generate natural passive immunity in us. And artificial passive immunity is by taking in sera of different types. One is hyperimmunity serum. Here we, we utilize uh, uh, animals like horse or pig, inject the pathogen, 
develop serum there, collect the serum and then use it for our purposes. ATS is the common hyperimmunity serum which we employ in many an occasion. And treatment for diphtheria and gangrene, this also employs a hyperimmunity serum. And convulsant serum, this is a serum collected from a person in recovery period. When a person gets infection and uh, if the disease or if the infection is cured and a pers the person remains in recovery period for some time, if we collect serum in such a time during that period, uh, we can get a number of antibodies, active antibodies specific for that infection. Say for example, rubella antibody antibody against rubella is from convulsant serum. And at times, we collect pooled serum. This is serum collected from healthy individuals and this is employed for common uh, infections which we face uh, in our daily routine. And now, let us consider in brief the properties of uh, antigen. Antigen is a molecule that stimulates immune response. And what is an immune response? Immune response is the response given by our immune system by way of antibody production. So, any substance that causes immune system to produce antibodies is immunogenic and it can function as an antigen. And foreign molecules which can be recognized by the lymphocytes of the adaptive immune system, these also function as foreign molecules, I mean antigens. A very important property of our immune system, as I mentioned earlier, is immune recognition. Whichever is not uh, our own, say whichever is foreign to our body, that is identified by a number of mechanisms by the immune system. And immediately, some B cell populations are recruited, they are activated by way of clonal selection and a clone of B cells is specified uh, to produce antibodies against a particular antigen. And this immune recognition is very important to keep up our health. And in fact, this is the mechanism by which our immune system offers protect, protection against uh, myriad infections uh, we come across uh, during our lifetime. A number of toxins, a number of microbes, at times uh, foreign blood cells uh, when we go for transfusion. And at times, we go for transplantation of organs, so cells of transplanted organs, at times allergens to which we are exposed to in our daily life and certain chemicals to which we are exposed as in the case of our labs. All these, they can function as efficient antigenic uh, substances. And based on uh, their uh, ability to give a response, immune response, Antigens are of two types, complete antigens and incomplete antigens. Complete antigens stimulate antibody production and can react with them. Incomplete antigens, they do not stimulate antibody production, but can react with those antibodies which are already produced in our system. And based on the source, antigens are of three types, intrinsic, extrinsic and xenogenic antigens. Often we consider antigen to be foreign, at times it need not be. Our own tissues, they have got their own antigens and the antigens produced by each tissue is different from the antigens produced by some other tissue and at times Whenever immune system is hyperactive by an error, immune system tries to produce antibodies against our own antigens and such antigens are intrinsic. And in such a case, we get autoimmune diseases and extrinsic diseases as many of us assume, 
these are antigens coming into our body from external sources. And genogenic antigens, these are a specific case. Antigens are uh, present in a number of uh, phylogenetically uh, related uh, individuals. Say for example, cardiolipins of uh, human cardiac system, human heart, these are present in a number of uh, mammalian species. The, such antigens are called genogenic uh, antigens. And considering the characteristics of antigens, uh, which render them more immunogenic. Antigens are macromolecules. The more is the size, the more is the immunogenicity. Say for example, hemocyanin, thymoglobin, tetanus toxin. These are of thousands of uh, uh, daltons of molecular weight. Say for example, tetanus toxin is of 55 kilo daltons of molecular weight and hemocyanin about uh, 6000 kilo daltons, thymoglobin about 629 kilo daltons. Chemically, Antigen may be protein, may be polysaccharide, may be lipid. And proteins and polysaccharide, if they are antigenic, they uh, generate efficient immune response. And tyrosine, whenever it is present in the sequence of an antigen, for majority of the antigens are proteins, tyrosine always increases uh, antigenicity in our uh, system. And solubility of an antigen in body fluids is a key factor in uh, generating uh, protection, immunity in our system. An antigen must be soluble in our uh, body fluids, then only it can stimulate uh, an immune response. The more is the solubility, the more antigenic it is. And once again foreignness, the more is the foreign nature of the antigen, the more immunogenic it is. The more foreignness, the more immunogenic uh, uh, nature. I mean to say, immune responses are uh, uh, more effective when antigen is foreign one. And structurally also, structural stability is a key factor. An antigen should be structurally stable in order to generate uh, an efficient immunogenic response. When an antigen is uh, subjected to denaturation, generally uh, immune response is pure, poor. And chemically, let us consider proteinaceous antigens. Majority of these antigens are recognized by both the T cells and B cells in our uh, system. And polysaccharides, when they are antigenic, these are recognized only by B cells. And lipids, these are pure, purely immunogenic and recognized only by T cell populations. And nucleic acids are very poor uh, immunogenic substances. And let us consider at this juncture epitopes and paratopes. So, majority of the antigens are uh, proteins, and epitope is that particular part of the antigen which reacts with the antibody. And paratope is complementary, it is that part of the antibody which reacts with the epitope. And nature is so benevolent that epitopes and paratopes, they are complementary in their uh, structure, so that a lock and key mechanism operates in identification of the antigen and uh, uh, response, quick response of the immune system to fight against that antigen. Say epitope is that part of the antigen reacting with the antibody. Paratope is that part of the that specific part of the antibody reacting with the ant epitope of the antigen. And what are the different sources of antigens? So, in our daily life, we inhale a number of macromolecules into our system. We go round the streets, inhale dust particles inhale uh, allergens. So, uh, proteins or uh, other antigens inhaled uh, in inhaled substances, they can be antigenic. As such, daily we consume so much amount of food material. Those allergic substances, uh, 
uh, which are taken uh, in through our oral route, say ingested macromolecules, these are sources of antigens. And at times, uh, as in the case of uh, a number of treatments, uh, we get antigens beneath the skin through dermal route, or in the case of uh, uh, mosquito bites, uh, we get uh, antigens into our system. And uh, at times, as I uh, gave an account earlier, some antigens are generated uh, within the body cells, say our own cells. And at times, when there is a viral infection, genes of viruses, they encode proteins uh, and these proteins, they can be antigenic. And a small account of uh, certain incomplete antigens, what we call them haptans. Hapten is an incomplete antigen. This is a small molecule when compared to the antigens, which we considered earlier with uh, low molecular weight. So, low molecular weight substances, which are small and having poor antigenicity, they can be called as uh, haptans. And in general, these are non-immunogenic in nature. And haptans never induce immune response. Uh, remember, immune response is simply understanding it is antibody production. And haptans become immunogenic at times when they are coupled with certain conjugates, what we call them carrier molecules, then a hapten may become immunogenic. And in our daily life, we are exposed to a number of haptans like drugs, antibiotics in our uh, daily treatment protocols and chemicals like dinotrophenol to which we are exposed to in our uh, routine labs. And two important properties of antigens are uh, needed to be stressed, one is immunogenicity. This property allows a substance to induce a detectable immune response when introduced into animals. Such substances, we call them as immunogens. Substances uh, which generate a detectable immune response are immunogens. And another important property is antigenicity. This property allows a substance to combine specifically with uh, antibody. <coughs> whether immunogenic or not. Therefore, all antigens are immunogens. And now, let us consider <coughs> antibodies, the key players in our uh, immune system. Antibodies are a class of proteins, what we call them immunoglobulins. They are specific in that, they are uh, antigen binding proteins. When an antibody binds uh, a, an antigen, this results in uh, <coughs> protection, I mean resistance and uh, uh, neutralizing the ill effects of pathogens. And each antigen has uh, each antibody has a specific valency to bind with a number of uh, antigens. And antibodies, they have uh, effector functions, complement is uh, a system in, in our body that helps against uh, uh, fighting against infections. And fixation of complement proteins is a key step in such uh, uh, act activities and immunoglobulins uh, help in fixation of complement proteins, rendering our body immune to certain uh, uh, infections. And in addition, immunoglobulins or the antibodies as we commonly call them, they bind to various cells facilitating a number of uh, immune responses. And this is the typical structure of uh, an immuno <coughs> immunoglobulin. it contains two chains. All antibodies are basically proteins. The amino acid sequence, this is, this can be differentiated into a number of chains and domains. Each immunoglobulin has uh, two heavy chains, this is one 
and this is the second one. And there are two light chains as well, one and two. And disulfide bonds uh, help keep up the integrity of the immunoglobulin. There are interchain uh, disulfide bonds here connecting the two heavy chains, and there are uh, intra chain disulfide bonds 1, 2, 3, 4 in different domains. So, an, an antibody ideally has uh, four uh, amino acid chains, two heavy chains, and uh, two light chains and the two heavy chains are connected by means of interchain disulfide bonds. So, also light chain and heavy chain are uh, connected by means of uh, interchain disulfide bonds. In addition, intra chain disulfide bonds uh, are also there, uh, which help uh, keep up the integrity and structural stability of the antibody this is a magnified view. And here we can uh, uh, observe the different domains of uh, an antibody. Each heavy chain has four such domains. These three are constant regions C 1, C 2 and uh, C 3. And this is uh, V h domain, variable domain. This is variable domain of the light chain. This is uh, constant domain of the light chain. And the ability of our immune system is so astonishing. Right from our neonatal uh, age, right from our birth till death, we come across a number of infections. Thousands of uh, antigens are introduced into our system. And nature is uh, so benevolent as I mentioned earlier our immune system is able to recognize thousands and thousands, even lakhs of antigens to which we are exposed to. And whenever there is a secondary immune response, specific antibody is generated against a specific antigen. There is no randomness, there is no zigzag nature, there is no confusion. Hence, specific antigen, specific antibody, this specificity protects us very well. And this specificity is due to the variable domains of uh, both light chain and uh, heavy chain. These play a key role, a very important role in rendering protection to us in uh, the case of uh, number of infections which we come across. And this slide, this shows the hinge region. This offers flexibility to this uh, protein molecule during uh, immune reactions. And as I mentioned earlier, there are different domains V L domain and C L domain in light chain, V H domain and C H domains in the heavy chain. And at times contributing to the uh, efficiency of antibodies, oligosaccharide moieties are also present on uh, uh, antibodies. And this is a model of IgG molecule, which is the predominant uh, immunoglobulin ever in our system. Uh, you can observe two heavy chains and two light chains and the interchain disulfide bonds in this model. And the structure function relationships of uh, antibodies is worth considerable. And antibody to observe its uh, functional uh, relation, uh, we can digest it with uh, papain. And papain digestion causes generation of three fragments of uh, an antibody. Two F A B fragments with uh, uh, valency one, say monovalent uh, antibody fragments and one <coughs> F C fragment. And specificity as I mentioned earlier is determined by V H and V L domains. And F C fragment, this has effector functions as I mentioned earlier in the case of complement fixation and activation and recruitment of uh, a number of uh, tissues into the system. So, this is the antigen binding domain. 
and uh, this part of the heavy chain binds to FC receptors of various cells involved in immune responses and this part of uh, heavy chain binds the complement proteins and this in case of IgG immunoglobulins, this domain is responsible for placental transfer. And when we digest an antibody with uh, pepsin, which is a protease, we get uh, two fragments. One is FAB fragments with uh, valency 2 and one FC fragment. And once again, FAB fragment is antigen binding, FC fragment is with effector functions. And in our case, immunoglobulins are of uh, five different uh, types, IgG, IgM, IgA, IgD and IgE. The classification is based on heavy chains. IgG has gamma heavy chains. When there are mu heavy chains, it is IgM. When there are alpha chains, it is IgA. When there are delta chains, it is IgD when there are epsilon chains, it is Ig. And these different immunoglobulins, they have different functions and different attributes, uh, which can be considered a bit later on. And the properties of IgG of uh, human beings. This is the most stable immunoglobulin in our system, contributing to the almost to the 70 percent of the antibody titer. 1 ml of serum contains 8 to 16 milligrams of immunoglobulin G. And we can consider primary immune response and secondary immune response. Primary immune uh, response is the first one, which causes immune uh, memory. And secondary immune response, this is the second one, secondary one in the sense that Whenever there is a, a second infection, second time infection, secondary immune responses are generated. When the secondary response is there, IgG concentration, IgG titer in serum increases uh, very much. And this is of molecular weight uh, 1,50,000 Daltons and its half life period is 25 days. This is low in concentration in uninfected humans, but raises uh, immediately after infection. This is the only antigen that can uh, cross uh, placenta and it does not require uh, antigen binding. It can fix complement proteins and it can bind to FC receptors or uh, of uh, immune cells. And when bound to phagocytes, it causes opsonization. Opsonization is a process uh, involving opsonins, a class of proteins uh, that weaken the pathogen. And in case of K cells, killer cells, uh, when uh, bound to IgG molecules, they become uh, antibody dependent cytotoxic cells, uh, which renders uh, ourselves with uh, immunity. And as such, there is a harmony between antibody and antigen as I spoke of earlier, the perfect complementarity between uh, antibody and antigen. Just because of that complementarity, each antigen can, uh, each antibody can identify the specific antigen and react uh, with it, so that uh, the ill effects of the antigen are neutralized. So, dear students, so in this lesson, uh, we briefly considered the components of immune system, the, the three tire system and the different types of immunity offered by the system and uh, certain properties of antigens and haptens, certain properties of antibodies, the classes of antibodies and the key concepts immune recognition and immune memory. Thank you.